Good morning. morning. (laughs) Today's reading is from the Bhagavad Gita, and this is the chapter called the Yoga of Devotion. These are the words of Sri Krishna. A man should not hate any living creature. Let him be friendly and compassionate to all. He must free himself from the delusion of I and mine. He must accept pleasure and pain with equal tranquility. He must be forgiving, ever contented, self-controlled, united constantly with me in his meditation. His resolve must be unshakable. He must be dedicated to me in intellect and in mind. Such a devotee is dear to me. He neither molests his fellow men nor allows himself to become disturbed by the world. He is no longer swayed by joy and envy or anxiety and fear. Therefore, he is dear to me. He is pure and independent of the body's desire. He is able to deal with the unexpected, prepared for everything, unperturbed by anything. He is neither vain nor anxious about the results of his actions. Such a devotee is dear to me. He does not desire or rejoice in what is pleasant. He does not dread what is unpleasant or grieve over it. He remains unmoved by good or evil fortune. Such a devotee is dear to me. His attitude is the same toward friend and foe. He is indifferent to honor and insult heat and cold, pleasure and pain. He is free from attachments. He values praise and blame equally. He can control his speech and he is content with whatever he gets. His home is everywhere and nowhere. His mind is fixed upon me and his heart is full of devotion. This true wisdom I have taught will lead you to immortality. The faithful practice it with devotion, taking me for their highest goal. To me they surrender heart and mind. They are exceedingly dear to me. So that is the yoga of devotion and the words of Bhagavan Sri Krishna. And today's lecturer is Swami Sarvadevananda. Om Bhadran Karne Vishrinuyam Devaha Bhadran Pashyamaksha Virijajatra Stiroirangai East Stubagum Shastaluvi Vyase Madeva Hitayadayuhu Swastina Indro Briddhasravaha Swastina Pusha Vishavedaha Swasti nastak sho arishtanemi Swasti no brihaspati ridadhatu Om shanti 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 hi Om O gods, may we hear what is auspicious with our ears. O ye who are worthy of worship, may we see with our eyes what is auspicious. With bodies and limbs strong, may we spend the rest of this life in adoring and pleasing you, the Lord. May all the gods bestow upon us peace and joy. Om peace, peace, peace be unto us all. <coughs> so today, Our topic is austerity, its meaning and purpose. Really, it's a wonderful subject 
to think about, though we get frightened with the word austerity, but in our everyday life we do austerity, we undergo austerity. For our day-to-day living we do austerity, against our wish, against our capability to handle situation, we do go through certain penance, certain troubles. Anything in life to be achieved, we find that we need some sacrifice for that. And that sacrifice can be termed as austerity. And in more so for spiritual life, it's a must. And in all the scriptures, they talk about this austerity, forbearance, the good, noble characters. The word tapas, which means austerity, it comes from the word tap. Tap means heat, to burn, something to burn. So tapas is normally means when one willfully undergoes certain, what you call, fasting, self-control, trying to restrain from certain things for the self-mastery. These are called the word tap. And it generates heat and it purifies the soul. As we know, as heat removes the alloys of the metal and makes it pure, like it makes it shining, soft and soothing. Example is given, so suppose you take a bauxite, the aluminium ore from the ground, and when it is brought out, it is filled with alloy. And we don't find any trace of the beautiful aluminium. And then if it is put into blast furnace and with so much heat and then it's burned and the alloys go out and then it can be made a pure alloy. Pure alloy of course is very difficult but even if it is 99.9 or 8, it will be surprising to know that how bright is that and how soft is that, how mellowed. As we have just in the prayer evening, at this prayer we said, be humbler than a blade of grass. It's a metal, but it is when it's hard, it is really very hard. Oh, it needs some problem there. No, they have fixed it for their purpose. Oh. Anyhow, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Come, 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 let it come closer. So, uh, the, the aluminium ore, which is really, is, is not at all very interesting to look at. But, when it's put into the process, a purification that is called the tapa, tapas, tap, and that is making a total transformation into it, and it is really bright, shining, soft, and it is useful in so many ways in life. It attracts our attention. So similarly, this soul, this self which has, as we know, Vedanta teaches us the potential divinity, the shining divinity, the divine, the Satchidananda, the absolute blessedness, absolute peace, absolute joy, the ocean of bliss and contentment inside, which is hidden now. It put through the austerity, the process of austerity and self control, then it brings out a shining life of a saint. It makes a saint. It makes a great soul who 
give solace to the people of the world. So we do not see this effulgent and bright self in us. Rather we see this individual who is having so much of anger, frustration, our hatred and all the human imperfections that will manifest as a shining bright life of experience, excitement, energy and guidance for the whole world. So this tapas, it is to be done, there is also, it is defi its definition is very important, but how it is to be done, that's also very important. So it is a scientific process through which we can bring out the shining effulgent nature of ours and people have done it before. The saints and sages, they have come out like that. They were like us, human beings, but they rose above and they are the bright, soothing examples before our scorching life of suffering and pain. So, when it is done properly, we take proper steps. The self-effulgent eternal consciousness and blissfulness, that light of that consciousness will spontaneously come out. That eternal joy which is here, it springs forth. And that is the simple word, individual self, little self, becomes the cosmic self. The individual personality, who is bound by so many imperfections, becomes a perfect person where the glory of the Lord manifests. So, but it is a question that if the process, what the scriptures talk about that, and really what characters can come out of that, we must have to contemplate on that a little bit. We look at that, the very powerful characters. That's why Swami Vivekananda's spirituality is transformation of character. A character will be a firm character founded on the basis of truth and realization. That should come out. And then this life which is meaningless, will become fully purposeful and is meaningful. And we call them, as Christ said, they are the, they are the salt of the earth. Those who does, do manifest that divinity by following a little austerity. We remember that one of our great saints was Swami Madhubananda. You have read about him in the books, a book of six lighted windows. You have read something from Sami Jogeshan on this book. He is here, no? The author is in the audience. Oh, he's the audience. <laughs> you can get his signature to get books. So here, Sami Madhavananda once uh, said, once some, he was very austere. He was the president of our order. He was the uh, general secretary, we call, <laughs> the chief executive of the whole Ramakrishna movement of the world, and a very highly intellectual, wonderful monk, as an exemplary monk of our order. So when he was the president, he, he was quite old. And, but he will use his meditation cushion, very thin, hard, and he will sit for a long time in meditation. So some of the devotees silently saw that and brought a very nice, soft cushion and pleaded the private secretary that, could you please, when Swami goes for sitting on the, I, I, I saw that it's too hard and this age is too difficult for him to sit for a long time. 
could you just put it below his cushion, normal cushion, and put it below? And uh, he thought it's a good idea, so he brought it, he took it, and really put it, when Swami was in the evening meditation, will be sitting for meditation, so he put it under his normal cushion, and suddenly the Swami came, as usual, for sitting and doing his prayers, and he found it a little soft. <laughs> so he called the private secretary and said, what is this? No, Swami, uh, it is out of love. One of the devotees, he felt it this way and bought it, and please use it for that purpose. He said, okay, give this back to the devotee and let him use it for his own comfort. But tell him that no one, the language is, without penance and austerity or shedding tears for God, spending sleepless nights for God in japa and meditation, none has realized God. Spiritual life is not luxury. So get it out. <laughs> so it pushed out and he used his own cushion as usual, showing that it is it is choice. Austerity is a choice by one's own. I want to purify. See, look at the life of Christ, we see. Christ was out for 18 years of his life. And where was he? We have not very documented history, but this much is understood, that he was doing austerities. And he was going to different places of pilgrimage. Some say that he came to India to yogis and this and that. These are non-substantial, uh, substantiated facts maybe, but somewhere, wherever maybe, he was doing austerities. Where was food? Where was shelter? Sky thy roof. He was a monk, par excellence. Huh? Sky thy roof. Grass thy bed. What? Perchance what comes? That was his food. And going to different places huh? and in search of yogis and like that. You look at Ramakrishna's life. What a tremendous austerity he did. If you have read the life of Sri Ramakrishna, this Chetanananda Swami's book, they, you will find that it is really very difficult for ordinary people to con conceive that type of austerity and penance. Whole night he will be spending on the bank of the Ganges, whole night meditating and praying and meditating. And during daytime he will be doing some, and what about food? What is the where is the mind to take food? That means it is a purification process that is needed for spiritual life. But we look at that Buddha. You know of Buddha. Buddha took a resolution. He said that, okay, when he gave up the, his kingdom and left and came to Bodhagaya, a historic place is still there. And he sat there under a bow tree. And what was his resolution? He said, Iho asane me shariram. In this seat, let my body dry up. Shushyatu me shariram. Twag astimang shang pralayan chujatu. The skin, the bones, flesh, let them be all segregated, separated. Or prapto bodhing, without attaining bodhi, bodhi means realization of the highest, or nirvana, or prapto bodhing, bahu kalpa durlabham, which is very rare to attain through centuries of practice. Na ayam ata, I will not come out of this seat. Na ayam ata. Kayam atas chalishati. I will not get out of this seat. And he took a firm resolution and he sat. And what he did? He was fasting. Who will give the food? 
that's why the beautiful story of sujata sujata one lady a tribal lady she prayed to the goddess of the forest to offer something some pious is called the pious rice pudding when her wish will be fulfilled and actually she brought that pious eh? and when buddha was almost dying because of too much austerity too much fasting and then when he was almost going to die that is the time sujata brought that what you call rice pudding so we find and that saved his life and then he took the middle path how much to do austerity what to do i i'm just telling the example of the great people who have realized the truth and how they went through it without caring for anything for the purification of the soul but what the scripture suggest is there any scriptural support for that yes patanjali says eight fold stages of practice as the sage patanjali talks about yama niyama and what are in the niyama five five yama is some control self control and niyama is some saucha santosha tapa sadhayo ishara pranidhanani niyama what are the rules to follow this saucha purification of the body and mind santosh satisfaction try to keep the mind in one type of contentment and tapa there comes the word tapa tapa means austerity in life whether we like or not we had to undergo some austerities but if one willfully accepts that austerity in the life for realization of the highest truth then it becomes meaningful that's why they said saucha santosha tapa austerity swadhaya is the study of the scriptures and surrender to god ishara pranidhanani so here we find the reference of this tapas in the patanjali's yoga system is a very basic condition before you go to do your yoga what is called the present day yoga that is the asana you have to do austerity before because you are trying to purify yourself for preparing yourself for god realization so there the word tapas is given mention we find that shankara says that when we in life when we undergo every day we get all these things may various types of sufferings and pains it is created by some human being some other uh, natural calamities they create some pain and suffering for us but how to endure that with inner strength and taking some spiritual attitude that is called tapas so shankara has defined that when one can endure all types of suffering sahanam sarva dukhanam all types of miseries and pain and suffering they will come but one can sahana means can endure can endure it how not like a coward as we do murmur we cry and endure is it not <laughs> we said oh why it has happened to me eh hey, this should not come to my life ah, i am not like that i don't deserve this and this and that that is a normal way that's why we we endure them in this way and the result we get out of that we don't get the best result of it we murmur we cry and we weep we get sometimes few sympathetic words from some friends and may not be also sometimes you may not get that sympathy huh? rather you may be hurt you are out of emotion you are saying why it has happened to me no i am not i'm not like that and this person did that that person and people will say no 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 you look you have your trouble my god then your sympathy is gone <laughs> you went for sympathy seeking sympathy and the opposite thing came instead of sympathy you are hurt more hurt so but if one can take it sahanam sarva dukhanam all these difficulties whatever comes as a challenge sarva dukhanam 
अप्रतिकार पूर्वक नॉट इवन टू टेक एनी स्टैंड टू मीडिएट दैट बट टू बोल्डली फेस दैट एंड इवन नॉट थिंकिंग अबाउट दैट चिंता और बिलाप मीन्स रिपेंटेंस इफ वन कैन डू दैट दैट इज कॉल्ड द इंडियोरिंग that is the endurance that is the penance so this is a very high ideal has been placed how we can endure the worst sufferings and pains with courage and strength and that builds up the character when we face such challenges and we can overcome that then we become more powerful than ever when we cry and weep we become weaker and weaker and weaker when you can face that with dignity with my inner strength and knowing that why i am doing it it is purifying me tulsi tulsi das was a great saint you know and he used to say oh tulsi please go to certain place where you are not honored Brother, you are dishonored. Where they will not speak highly about you; rather, they will speak something bad about you. <laughs> go to that place. And why you go? Purpose is his word. That Rama ka saran hoy. Then you will think of God. Oh my, oh my Lord Rama, why it is happening to me? Then you go to God. and that means it wakes up it brings up the awareness of god consciousness not to repent not to fight in a different way but to for our self development it is a, it is an opportunity every day we when we get such such reactions such such situations which we confront this can be taken as a golden opportunity that it is i am trying to transcend it by my own inner strength and why i am doing i am trying to be purified and this is a purification process god has put me to this test today and then i have su- i have been successful in that so that that itself is a glory of changing our weak character into a bright and bold character so it is understanding that we should have the purpose should be god realization the purpose of austerity as we are talking about here unconsciously or consciously whether we wish or not things happen in life and we are confronted with this type of pain and agonies but how much powerful we are how much ready we are for god realization that is how much character strength of character comes in our life so this god realization should be the goal and to bring equanimity of the mind and the peace of the mind and to reach a point of absolute unruffled state of joy and blessedness that should be the goal for which we undergo willful willfully undergo the penance that's why the monks you will find <clears throat> monks willfully undertakes this austerities as i said buddha did christ did ramakrishna did the wandering monks they give up their home and what they do they accept this austerity as a part of their spiritual journey they go from door to door to beg some food and then where they sleep where is their home maybe some tree under the tree some grass or sky uh, where they live in deep when it is snowing when they are in health disease or something or what who is going to help them for god they endure this but there is also this austerity 
is a thing to be understood. People think that too much torture of the body is sometimes austerity. So the Gita talks about that. Let me see what Gita says. Gita suggests that austerity is a necessity thing of life. And people follow that type of austerity as is their, their mind is purer or less pure. Who is a, you know, the three qualities of the mind, but the whole universe is created in the, by the three qualities. One is called sattika quality, rajasa quality, and tamas quality. Darker quality, when it is a little refined and bright. Bright quality, is, as we all know, love, compassion, eh? devotion to God, sacrifice, selflessness, sacrifice for the good of others, all the noble qualities called sattiko, S quality. And R quality, pride, arrogance. I did it. I am such and such. I did this austerity. See, look at me, how great I am. That also an austerity, but done with pride, arrogance, and uh, asking for the attention of people, name and fame. And Satyago will be there. People will do, yes, that will be only the inner purification. And the face will be shining brighter and brighter and brighter with contentment. Not to show anybody, not to show to anybody. As Christ said, don't fast like the publicans do. Rather you anoint that day when you are fasting. Let people see that you are happy. <laughs> if we fast and cry, what is the use of that fasting? Rather eat well. <laughs> huh? Rather you, you, are, you are enjoying your fasting. That should be the purpose of fasting. And if it is fasting is a torture for oneself, so what is the use of doing that? That means accept it willfully. You take it as your own volition. Not that scripture is telling or somebody has told you and you will gain this merit or you will go to heaven or you will get the praise of other people. Oh, oh I am fasting. As people do. How much fasting we do? Suppose in every religion people fast, no? Uh, so in Ramadan time, people fast. And then in, in, in Jewish tradition, there is fasting. Huh? Lent is there. So Hinduism, there are many fasts are there. Uh, but are you enjoying that fast? You are fasting for what purpose? Fasting is not to show your, uh, what you call, strain and painful face to others. As if you are in torture all day. <laughs> Rather, it should give other inspiration. See, someone is doing, thinking of God, he is fasting today. And the Sanskrit word will be upo baso. Fasting, if you translate it, it is called upo baso. Upo means close. You be close to God that day more. Because other day you spend some time in cooking and then cleaning the dishes and doing things. Today you are not giving that time, even that much time. So you are absorbed in God, sitting close to God in your meditation and becoming uh, part of the joy. What God's joy is that, it will reflect in the heart. So that is called the fasting. So uh, that is the Christ uh, suggested that way to how to fast. Right? So, Gita suggested that men who practice severe penance of an arbitrary type, which is not sanctioned by the scriptures, and who are full of hypocrisy and egotism, and are obsessed with desire, attachment, and pride of power, and who emaciate the elements constituting their body as well as me, the Supreme Spirit dwelling in their heart, know those senseless people to have a demoniac disposition. So, it is, they are doing all this austerity. Say, Ravana, 
deed austerity. You know the story of Ramayana. <coughs> Excuse me. So in the Ramayana, you see Rama. Uh, Rama was doing austerity also, and Ravana was doing austerity, and Ravana did tremendous austerity, and he got the power. What he used that power? Your austerity has a power; it produces some result. What? I will be the Lord of the world. There is no other Lord. I am the Lord. And arrogance, pride, uh, senseless running for the sensate joys of life only. That's why Ravana did the same austerity. The same power can be used. As I always say, that you are driving the car, you put the gas pressure, the car will move. But which direction? Depending on your gear, front gear or back gear. So power, austerity gives power. So he says that some people think that austerity should be too severe. You know, you go to Himalayas, you will find in India if you go. In Kumbh Mela, you have seen some, so many pictures of Kumbh Mela, no? Different types of sadhus, monks you see. Some have the concept that they will be doing austerity. And some are standing for whole life, standing on one leg. Swami Vivekananda mentioned that uh, India is such a crazy place. If someone tells that you will go to heaven or attain something by standing on one leg, eh, you will find that so many people will be standing in one leg. <laughs> someone will say, okay, you raise your hand like this and keep it for 12 years. Eh? Eh, people will find that there are people to do that. I saw when I was in Uttarkasi, in the, up in the Himalayas, eh, I saw one person, a right hand, it is, it is, otherwise the body is very strong and healthy, but the right hand always up like that and he never pulls down. It has become so stiff and so emaciated and his nail has grown like a curly hair, like that. <laughs> so this is austerity people are doing. But what for? What for this austerity? I have saw, I saw one uh, monk, he was austere, he will not as lie down or sit any time of life. My God, what a tremendous austerity. Huh? And he is hanging himself in a rope uh, and putting the armpit there and in a branch of a tree, two ropes are hanging and I saw that he is just putting, standing like that and he can sleep also there <laughs> but because he made in the height of your standing height. So it is in the armpit. So they are doing austerities. But Gita does not support that austerity. Too much austerity. Buddha was doing too much austerity. Though he was sattvika. He was trying to know the purpose of life eh, and to get liberated. That was his purpose. But still, he was going to the extreme austerity. We cannot do that. It is not necessary. It is not recommended. But what is recommended? We like to go through that. This is the Gita's suggestion in the chapter 17. And I have read that these people do austerity. And what they do? They emaciate the elements constituting their body. That means our body gets emaciated by that type of austerity and fasting. As also the Supreme Lord who is sitting here. You are tormenting him also. See, Krishna says, that I am in the heart of everyone. And they torture me also <laughs> in this process of austerity. So that is not recommended by the Bhagavad Gita. Then he says, <clears throat> this tapas may be of three types, as I have told you, mentioned. That is the Trividam. Trividam means three types, Sattiko, Rajasika and Tamasika. So the Tamas people don't know the meaning and purpose and they unnecessarily torture their body neither to be thinking of the... It is not our goal that we should be thinking of the body day and night. Eh? Nurture the body. They are called the Asuras. Asuras in Sanskrit, Deva and Asura. Demon and God. 
in hinduism demon means those who are concentrated and focused on the body and body and body only huh? 24 hours they don't think anything beyond body so that is not also the goal and this torture is not also the goal so what is the goal goal is what if they are saying that there are these are the practices what we can practice we are not talking of the monks we are not standing all the night day hanging ourselves under a rope neither we are going to be emaciated by right, put, pulling the right hand nor we are digging ourselves under the ground uh, so do some kumbhaka pranayama breathing stopping we are not doing those what our our austerity is very important the gita suggests what the gita suggests is that the 14 verse of the 17th chapter of the bhagavad gita they say deva pujanam Devadvija Guru Pragam Pujanam Saucham Arjavam Brahmacharja Mahingshacha Shariram Tapa Uchchate You want to bodily do some austerity? Do this. Deva, worship God. Every day, make some time to do some worship of the Divine. And these are the holy people. In previous time, that was called the Brahmins, because the Brahmins were in those days of when Krishna is talking about them, they were the realized people, realized souls. So, holy people worshipping or respecting and doing something for them, that is one austerity. Because you have to sacrifice your time. For your morning prayer meditation, you have to give some time of your busy schedule. So, he see how Gita is eternally important, it is more applicable to today's context as it was important in the thousands of years past. So it says worship of God or the holy people or Brahmins, sacrifice and adoration and giving some time for your own spiritual teacher or your guru and also any, uh, anyone respectable in the society who is your senior, who is your elder, huh? who is excelled in some good qualities. Give some time so that their quality come into your life. This is austerity. A little departure from the concept of austerity of hardship only physical body. And Brahmacharyam. Socham. Uh, Socham means the purity. Pure purification of the body and try to keep the mind in nobler thought that is called the purification of the mind. Bodily purification that we can do. We can take shower and clean ourselves. That is bodily purification. How the mental purification? Purification of the mind. Keeping the mind in a lofty thought. And centering our life around worshipping the divine, worshipping the holy people, worshipping the noble people in the society. Every society has noble people who are to be, but who we can follow them and their selflessness, their dedication. So, serve them. That is the austerity because you have to give your time, energy, your money and your all efforts. So that is called the tapa of the bodily, bodily austerity. So, ucham and another important point, arjabam. Arjabam means simplicity. Mind and speech and the body should be what you say you think that way and you really do that way. Mind, that is called the simplicity. No complication in that life. So how to make our life mind very simple, truth, truthful, that is austerity. And also it says Brahmacharyam. Brahmacharyam means celibacy is a normal meaning, but it means the Keeping the mind in lofty thought, that is called Brahmacharya. Because you keep the mind in lofty thought, mind will not go for lower types of thoughts. From an ahimsa, ahimsa is non-injury. That's a great austerity. That I will make, I will be not cause of any, not to hurt anyone, any human being, not plant or animal. 
I am not going to hurt anyone, non-injury. That is a great austerity. So you see, here, four or five points have been given. If one can do according to the Bhagavad Gita, you are doing the austerity of your body. And body is becoming purer, which will help you to go for uh, being connected with the divine. Unless the body is pure, the Lord does not come over here. Yeah? You know, in a pure place only you put the Lord, you set the Lord's altar, not in a dirty place. So the body should be pure, mind should be pure. So th those are the austerities to clean. So here, worship of God, worship of the holy people, worship of one's guru, worship of the elders and great souls, purity of the mind and heart, straightforwardness in life, and keeping the mind in divine thought means continence, what has been mentioned here, and non-violence or non-injury. These are called the penance of the body. <clears throat> now, penance of the mind. That's a difficult task. He says, words which cause no annoyance to others and truthful. Two conditions. Truthful, at the same time, it will not be causing annoyance to others. Can we use such words in our life? How much measuring, how much careful one should be what I say? It's, we know the words are so powerful. We can make our somebody a friend of our life. We can make our if we good friend go away from our life forever. These words. And how you use it. You need not have to please and say something untrue. But how to say the truth. And also try not to hurt anyone. Holy Mother used to say things. We have to learn from her. How to say things but not to hurt anyone. Huh? So this is a self-control. That is called the tapas, austerity. Austerity in using those who talk random, sometimes they talk so much of uh, garbage. <laughs> and those, it is said, those who speak few words, thoughtful, and before they use ten times things, as our Bhagavad Sami used to say, is it not? You say something, before you say, you question yourself. Is it necessary? <laughs> Second point. Is it useful? Uh, is it beneficial? So if you think that way, you get many words will be, you, say, you are coming out of your mouth, you say, no, 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 no. It is not needed here. It is not useful here. So it is not beneficial. So this is a restraint and that is called austerity. As if checking yourself. So. It is called words which cause no annoyance to others and yet they are truthful, agreeable and beneficial. A tremendous austerity to use such words. As well as the study of the Vedas and Sastras. That means keep a time every day. Right? How to engage our mind in some higher thought. How do you do? The scriptures. Uh, like Bible, like Dhammapad, like Gospel of Ramakrishna, like Upanishads, like the Gitas, which are pregnant with only nobler and higher truths and truths alone. So that is also austerity, to keep engaged every day to some positive, thoughtful, thought-provocating ideas from the scriptures. And practice of the chanting of the divine name. You have, we always say, chant the name of the Lord and His glories unceasingly. So that divine name, chanting of the divine name, to make a practice that I will not talk other talks, rather I will talk about God and God alone. I will chant, uh, and whenever I am thinking myself, let my mind repeat the mantra, the div divine mantra Guru gave, or the holy name I am repeating. That is an austerity. See, when we are driving, is it not an austerity? We can look here, there, do all these things. We can sing some or uh, play some uh, records. But how many of us can do that when I am driving, let me utilize this time. This is private time for me. I can repeat the Lord's name now. 
uh, and purify myself. Uh. This is austerity because we don't do it, but it is to accept this idea and to do it positively. That's a help. And then it is said that this penance, this is the words penance of the speech. And now, cheerfulness of mind, this is mental. Mental austerity is what? World will always try to pull us down. Eh? To see your sour face. <laughs> People enjoy. <laughs> they create. You are very cheerful. And you hear some, somebody said something to you. Suddenly it hits your ear. And your cheerful face goes. <laughs> so but. Can we keep our cheerfulness? Eh? I am not to be subject to somebody's provocation like that in a negative sense, to pull my smile into a sour uh, expression. So that's why it is said, cheerfulness of the mind, placidity, habit of contemplation on God, control of the mind, and perfect purity of the inner feeling. That's very important, no one in observing. Perfect purity of our inner feeling what I am feeling inside and that that should be perfect pure means if you think of God that is the perfect purity inside and be careful whether I am becoming pure in my heart or I am putting the garbage of the outside world huh? always we do that you look at that whole day what we do <clears throat> how much garbage from the television and for important things are there that's okay but unnecessarily, how many things we in, take it in? And you know, spiritual life, you all know, we will have to bring it out. We, when we, that's a common complaint, no? We are meditating and my bad thoughts are coming. Where the bad thoughts come from? I have one time lovingly stored in my mind. And mind, it was hiding here and there. Now you are pouring good thoughts and they where they will go they will have to come out of the ink pot so it is coming out of the mouth so what we have done we have to undo that so should we be so unintelligent that I will add more to my garbage so that I will have to work more to take it out so the Gita says that is your austerity of the mind that you keep your inner feeling as pure inner ideas pure. So these are the called mental. So here we hear about the physical austerity, mental austerity and speech austerity in the speech. These are the three practices what we can do eh, every day to be careful about uh, this that because these are all helping us to purify ourselves and gradually raise our consciousness into another level. And all these things is to be practiced by everyone. And it is that makes someone who does, who, who will be called a very successful, pure soul, practicing these austerities. He is called a sattika person, as I have defined as yes, the pure, pure state, who is doing these threefold penances or practices with supreme faith that by this I will purify myself and it will help me to open my inner spirit manifest in my life and no other no other expectation that I will be popular in the world uh, people will praise me see what a great yogi he is practicing or I will go to heaven afterwards Hindus don't care for heaven because this is temporary joy uh, you go for a permanent joy that's okay if it is not the temporary uh, heaven you go and you have to come back again, then, then it is useless. That's why sattiko person will be doing only for purifying the heart and God realization. Then rajasa, he will be rajasik, who, is be, who will be doing all this for austerity performed for the sake of getting renowned. Huh? Oh, have you seen that person? He is such a renowned austere person. That means people's praise, the same hankering for praise, name, fame. So those are Rajasik people. 
Gita suggests that the austerity which is performed for the sake of the renown of renown, honor or adoration, as well as for any other selfish gain, either in this in all sincerity or by or by way of ostentation and yields an uncertain and momentary result, having been spoken of here, they are called the Rajasika people. That means I am doing for my name, fame, power, position. No, you do austerity and you gain power. Uh, that's why many uh, occult powers may come by performing penance. They can penetrate all, they can, you know, I once I saw in Himalayas, one person is put under the ground and there is a, and he remained there for half an hour, 45 minutes, kumbhaka, stopping the breath. He has practiced this uh, penance. What is the use? People will say, ha ha ha, see, he is under the ground for half an hour. Oh my God, how did he, did he not breathe, breathe anyway? Some thought that there may be some hole, they search the hole, uh, or a tube connected there, but they don't find anything. But he is a yogi, he has controlled his breath as we do. Huh? 4, 16, 8. But don't do too much. Uh, don't follow that, that you must not do uh, this type of breathing exercise too much. More, not more than two times or three times. Uh, but anyhow, so when <laughs> this yogi is controlling the breath, Eh? For half an hour. So it is really something great. But for what? For God realization? Then why you will go to show to the people? So that is the Rajasika. And Tamasika is what? Which is said, penance which is rest, resorted to out of foolish obstinacy and is accompanied by self mortification. Self-mortification, as I have given the example, standing uh, forever. Huh? I have seen his feet, my God, it's swollen like that. It is a, a water oozing as it were from the lake. It is very difficult to look at that person. But he is doing austerity. So that's why it said penance, which is resorted to out of foolishness, obstinacy, and is accompanied by self-mortification, or is intended to harm others. They gain this power to do harm to some people and such penance has been declared as tamosika, the lowest one. So anyhow, we are to take advantage of this uh, best tool for uh, realizing God by controlling our speech, by our controlling our body and mind, keeping in nobler thought that or type of austerity which we can perform in our day-to-day -day life. And we are facing every day those challenges. And if we can do that, it will purify our heart and soul. Thank you. So I'll close with a chant now. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Shantu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Makashi Dukkabhag Bhavit Sarvastaratu Durgani Sarvu Bhadrani Pashatu Sarvas Sad Buddhimapnotu Sarvas Sarvatanandatu Om Shanti 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 Hi Om May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May all be freed from dangers. May all realize what is noble. May all be actuated by noble thoughts. May all rejoice everywhere. Om peace, peace, peace be unto us all.